special. Hello and welcome to another edition here. If you just joined us, this is live on Facebook and, of course, Fifi Banson TV. If you go to Fifi Banson TV on Facebook and Fifi Banson TV on YouTube, you get a chance to watch every conversation that we bring here. If you subscribe to the channel as well on YouTube, then you get notifications as well as uh, for every video that we put out there. Great to have you for company. Today, we are going to be talking to two legends of our game and especially looking at a lot of things happening in the recent times in our football. Well, we saw last week that the uh, qualifiers for the World Cup 2026 was released, that the draw was actually done, also led by our own very own Baby Jet, who was also there at the draw. Now, many questions have come up. We're going to be able to move through this group, where on paper it seems easy, but ball, the match is not played on paper. It's really on the turf. Mali is in our group, Madagascar, Central African Republic, Comoros, of all countries, is also in our group, and Chad is also in our group. And then we'll find out whether Ghana will have the capacity to be able to go through, because whoever tops that group qualifies automatically for the World Cup. Will Ghana go through that route, or go through a second place point where we'll have to go and play in Oceania and all that, or CONCACAF, before we're able to qualify for the World Cup. We want to go straight to that conversation. As well as look at the kind of things happening in our football now, uh, the state of our football, we've lost out on everything under 17, under 20, under 23. I mean, the kind of skewing that goes on in our football. And of course, we also saw recently that uh, the football DNA has been launched by the FA. Supposedly, it's supposed to tell us about the philosophy of our game. Have we never played any philosophy at all since 1958 when we joined CAF? Is that what it is? Or FIFA? Is that what it is? My guest in the studio to do justice to this conversation is uh, on the extreme right, a legend of our game as well, one of the top strikers we ever had for the Black Stars. He played in many countries, including Turkey and including Switzerland and in Germany as well. He is Augustin Ahenfo. I'm sure many of you definitely do remember him. Augustin, um, thank you and welcome to the show. Thank you, Fifi. Also here is one of the mercurial Ballers of our time, if you remember him very well, he started his career here uh, in Ghana with Liberty Professionals, moved through, and then eventually started playing in Europe. He played for many teams in Europe, in Greece, and in other countries as well. The Mercurial Derek Boating is in the studio. He always would wear the Martin back in the day, and when he's on the ball, I'm mm, exciting to watch. What are we missing from him? Derek, good to see you and good to have you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you Guys, I mean, a lot of things are happening. A lot of things have happened. Uh, first of all, I would like us to look at um, the philosophy issue. We'll come to Ghana's group at the World Cup, but I want us to take a look at the DNA that has been launched by the FA. Uh, they went to Congress, uh, came back from Congress. First of all, I info, were you happy with the, the things that happened in Congress as football people? Thank you, Fifi. Let me say... Uh good day to viewers. Yes, it is good to have a Congress. Uh, so it is a norm that uh, the football will bring football people together, which is the administrators will bring people together and make sure that we deliberate and tell them the progress of football thus far. And so it was good to see all of them converge in Kumasi for that purpose. Uh, there were tidbits from the speech that was given by the president. And so it is good, but uh, the one that really caught my eye was uh, the, what he spoke about coaching and mm. officiating as our problem. I, as a former footballer and also as a coach, I think I beg to differ on that. And I can't narrow it down to just coaching and an officiating. If you want to tell me that coaching is the problem, the question I also ask you that, okay, so who appoints those coaches there? So are you, are you making due diligence before appointing them? Or are you are appointing people that you can control? Every, even when it comes to training, let's say I want to train myself as a coach. If I allow somebody to pay for me to train myself, obviously the person can one day say that he is the one who did A, B, C, D for me. Mm -hmm. I think coaches in this country should be able to pay for themselves and then train themselves. And then make sure that they have 
the requisite experience to be able to say that yes, I did A, B, C, D, and I am successful. I did A, B, C, D, and I failed. One should be able to do that. But if we say that just coaching is the problem, let me leave out officiating because <laughs> when it comes to inducing referees and all that, who, who does that? It's not me. It's the club owners who are doing whatever they do to influence. Because mm. no referee in his own mindset, Fifi, will decide that I'm going to be the center man for House of Oak and Asante Kotoko. And without any influence from somebody, he will decide by himself that he wants to handle the game in one team's favor or the other. Mm. And so that let me, but let me single coaching. How do you say he's coaching? What have you done? What analysis have you done for you to be able to say that it's coaching? Let me dovetail it to the philosophy. This book that I have here, Fifi, mm -hmm. was written by Uncle Ben Kofi. Mm -hmm. Everything that the coach needs My father. is in there. Mm -hmm. So it's either coaches are lazy, so you can say they are the problem, or we are not appreciating it because it was written by a Ghanaian or an African. In this case, Ben Kofi. You know, when you go into coaching, they tell you factors that affect performance. Mm -hmm. It's all here. And I think Uncle Ben probably is, a, or was, because he's no more with us, a, a prophet. Look, page 163, Fifi. Mm -hmm. He says, the plight of African indigenous football coach. Mm -hmm. And he says, football coaching is a universal profession with different environments and practices from continent to continent, and even from country to country. Over here in Africa, conditions and practices prevailing are very identical to the extent that one might mistakenly assume that Africa, south of the Sahara particularly, belongs to another football fraternity with its own initiatives and norms. It goes down. But this is what really catches my eye. He says, there is no funding or very little funding, but results are instantly demanded. The coach suddenly becomes a magician who must invoke or conjure success to prevail. Training programs cannot be implemented due to inadequate funding. There is no viable administrative setup with logistics provided. Mm -hmm. And he goes on to say, improper equipment and inadequate supply of training gears are what the African coach contends with. Improvisation becomes the only way out of a point. Some players come to training on empty stomachs and yet expected to deliver on match days. Mm -hmm. And he goes on. When you, you, you flip it over, he's underlined the factors. He says the factors which must be effected to achieve good results are funding, one. Yeah. In everything you do, finance is number it's one. key, yeah. Two, administration, mm -hmm. and into bracket, personal and logistics. Mm -hmm. And then he goes, coaching. And then into about tactical awareness, physical. So all these things, equipment even uh, becomes uh, one of the, 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 the factors that affect. And then yeah. he goes on to talk about climate, weather, crowd behavior, officiating, mm -hmm. nutrition, and player welfare. And player welfare comes under motivation, incentives, bonus, medical care, and all that. And everything is in there. All sketches, whatever, VV is that. So, so if you go down deeply into it, then really and truly, it is not about coaching. No. There is a lot of things that has to go into it for the coaching or coach to be successful. Derek, what's your take? <coughs> <laughs> I feel as given as, I mean, yeah. from Ben Kofi's point of view, even the definition of who a good coach and what the coaches could do. Yes, it's all in, it's all in this book. What, what, what's your take? Yeah, I'm really, really happy that I feel have the book here. Mm. You are ben, Kofi. ben Kofi was my dad, you know, <laughs> when he was alive, you know, he was still raising peace. But for me, we have an FA who doesn't accept any criticism. Mm. They think they know everything. They, they are not at fault. Whatever you say, they have something to say, to answer to you or to back mm. up. But sometimes, you know, they, if they would listen to us or they would listen to what is going on right now, it's not about you coming, going to Congress, bring a lot of documents, talking and everything. When your preachers are, you have bad preachers. Mm -hmm. well, why, why are they blaming the coaches? Blaming coaches for what? 
They are not doing the right things as an FA. Let me give an example. When the, uh, 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 the 23 qualified for the, uh, uh, the tournament before the Olympics, mm -hmm. I was expecting the FA. You have like uh, you have a uh, uh, Godia Trump there. You have Michael Osei there as a coach. You have uh, Tampu as mm. a head coach. You support, what, what, what are they doing to help them? They're supposed to send them to Europe. All these three coaches to go and check whatever each player, whatever they are doing. But we have some time to do that. But they don't do that. They were in Ghana and waiting for the players. And they can invite players from Serbia, Romania, come on, Fifi. To come and do what? To come and qualify to the, uh, uh, to the Olympic, Olympic games. games? Oh, come on. I will expect them to uh, uh, look, at, uh, look at players as well. Because if you see the players, some of the players... Look, I was watching the game against uh, 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 Guinea. A midfielder come to receive a ball without scanning. He doesn't even know what is around him. He just came and received the ball in 10 and he was crushed. They took the ball away from him. And I was asking myself, wow, what's going on? Even the young kids that we are coaching, uh, right to dream or uh, uh, trust that we are, they know how to scan before receiving a ball. Because the midfield is the most important thing. Mm, the engine room. Yes. So, like, watching a lot of things and things that are going on, the FA are not taking blame and they are accusing coaches. And it's wrong. Coaches haven't done anything. Are they choosing the right kind of coaches? Or are they helping? coaches to attain the right kind of qualification? For me, they are not helping the coaches. Mm. They are not helping the coaches at all. So they cannot come out and blame the coaches. They, they, you know they don't blame themselves in anything. Mm. Because as a, as a footballer, sometimes when we go on the field and things didn't go well, we go to press conference, we talk, ah, today I have a bad day, or it wasn't good for me, blah, blah. But the FA never, ever said anything about what they are doing that is not good mm -hmm. but they always rather look for someone coach his place and put their finger mm -hmm. sometimes it's really really bad and for me i can say it and say it again for them football is business but for me and i and the rest of us is our life mm -hmm. football has given us everything we have right now mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. because of football we go places mm -hmm. you understand and we, we we have our family right now mm -hmm. so whenever we are talking about a game we don't cheat Mm. We don't cheat the game yeah. like they do. Yeah. We talk the truth. We talk about what is going on mm. so that we can fix it. And they don't, they don't want to uh, accept it. Anytime they see us, I've been saying it, they see us as a threat, the old players. They see us as a threat, and I don't know what they're looking for. And I told them the last time in front of them, and they don't want to accept it. Because like Steven said, football has to run by footballers, and they don't get it. But all the time they go ahead, they think they can do it alone. But look, this job is so huge. Mm -hmm. No one person can do it or two person. You, you need all everybody on board to come and do it. And but for them, they think they know everything. They go into Congress talking. But I hear some of the things about the Congress. It's like they go there to campaign. Was it was it I why was it was it Congress to deliberate on moving our football forward, or was Congress for campaign? Because I wasn't there personally, I really I cannot speak to mm. But I think that from what I read, the quotes that I read, uh, partly it was to give promises that the next term, this is what he was going to do, more or less like campaigning. Uh, I would have loved that they went there and deliberated on what had happened within the, the calendar year. Mm -hmm. And then possible effects and then the subsequent things that will come to play. But they were there to campaign and say all sorts of things. But like I've stated, uh, we are a family when it comes to football. Mm -hmm. Be it the journalist, the, the soccer player himself or herself, the, the federation and the people involved in football, we are a family. We are not supposed to be enemies. But it's been do, do you see too much division in uh, uh, yes. if, if you don't have in our football? The There's mm. so much division. In. Look, I've done my own the philosophy that mm. they mm -hmm. it's, it's good. Because I can always say that philosophy more or less can also be termed as an identity or mm. a plan. Mm -hmm. That one unless of course I don't understand the word philosophy. But I was digging and was researching and I realized that I've heard uh, they consulted certain people. 
And I can tell you, because I've been speaking to one or two people, they went to the Gambia FA mm. also as part of what they wanted to do. And when they went, the technical director of the Gambian Federation said, ah, why are you coming here? Because the person who even nurtured me to be where I am is in Ghana. Yes. In the person of Kocho Tiakandani. So why are you coming here? And you mean they went to the Gambia? Gambia. As part of putting that philosophy together. This book here can be our philosophy. Because this was adopted by the previous president of the FA and then certain things were added, which is the business aspect of but Gambian football saw its major rise during Osam Dodu's yes. time. He was the first, the under 17 coach the of Osam Dodu. Yes. Is what I'm saying. And the person says that the person who nurtured him to be where he is is Otia Kante. But they did not consult Otia Kante. Right in the philosophy, I can tell you for a fact. They went to Gambia. They were, look, Otia is not for anything. You mean they didn't go to Morocco? They didn't go to Egypt? Maybe they, they didn't went, go to. But I'm giving you. One Where you know that they went mm. is Gambia. We are looking to write our philosophy and go to Gambia. Gambia. That understood whatever from, from our own. It's not for a joke. We, we can hate Kojoti for all that we want. But amongst, when FIFA wanted to put a technical whatever together, amongst the coach or technical men all over the place, he was the only African. And had about eight Europeans as part of the group that wrote that. So he is a consultant for FIFA. And we don't appreciate him yet. And we go to Gambia hmm. to go and ask the Gambia whatever what they have been. And this, I think, I directed the white man and whoever in charge. They were there in Gambia. So when we say our football philosophy or identity, I mean, you guys have played the game. What has been our identity from, like they say, since, since, since? What has been our identity? <laughs> well, it is good, to, like I've said, it is good to have an identity. Then, are we, are so we, have we played without an identity from independence? That's, that's the question I wanted to do. So are we trying to say that all this while we've just been playing football without any identity? Okay. Are we seeing from bottom up or up down? Because I see this as geared towards where the blasters ultimately, but the fundamentals, which is Be -be because from the little experience that I have and I know, I know that if you're talking about a philosophy for a nation's football, it starts from the grassroots. Yes. Okay, so if you go to Germany, for example, uh, the DFB has a philosophy. They play very mechanical type of football. So right from the under 16, under 12, under 16, under 20, all the way to the senior national team, they play the same way. The women play the same way. Is that what we are about to do? Is that what we want to look at? That's what I want to understand. Or is this for the Black Stars alone? Assuming, assuming you employ uh, Hussein Murray as a national team, mm. he comes in with his own philosophy based on the understanding he has on the game. And he decides to come under a national team. And this philosophy is not in sync with what we've learned. What happens? Derek, let me let me take you on this let me take you on this on this trip. So if you bring in a coach, right, who doesn't understand our philosophy. Our philosophy is based on the fact that it is our traditional style of play, or they are based on sometimes even the kind of talent that you have. But the ta talent could determine what philosophy you are playing. Yeah. Yeah, for instance, to be honest with you, the FA doesn't care about our grassroots football. The only thing they care is about is the blasters. That's where the money is coming from. That's that where the sponsorships, that's where they pay coaches and pay mm. big, big bonuses. Mm. They don't care about our grassroots football. If they care about that, they will invest there. They will bring coaches who can uh, do the job. They will bring scouts who can go around and scout and bring all this talent around and have a debate after. Mm -hmm. But you cannot ask a coach to go and scout and at the same time coach, and you are not paying him every month. How can you, how can you do the job? 
they don't care. They don't care about the grassroots football. To be mm. honest with you, mm. before they said, ah, bring it goes back who help our football. No, it's not going to help our football. Like uh, I even said, but Tia Kente is there. He, he was my coach. Me, mm -hmm. my colleagues, uh, uh, my colleagues. But Tia Kente was our coach in uh, uh, Winneba yeah. with Joshua Tukwifi. Mm -hmm. And you passed in 1997, huh? Uh, no, yeah, 97, 99, 99, 99, yeah, 99. Mm. We stay, in, we stay in Winnie before, like. And he was assistant to Afani also. Yeah. To work out yes. In Argentina. Yes. Yeah. So Otia Kente is there. He know what our DNA means. Mm -hmm. You know, he know, he's no, he knows everything. But it's like our people don't respect him, and they don't even care. Like I said to Pivi, to be honest with you, for me, they don't care about the young players. They don't care about the grassroots football. They care only, only, only thing they have right now in mind is how the blaster will go to the World Cup. Then they will have some money, sponsorships will come on board, blah blah mm -hmm. blah. But if they cares about those things, they cares about this young football. They will invest mm -hmm. in our grassroots football mm -hmm. and leave the blaster because the blaster is already there. Mm -hmm. But those players that you are going to groom from now, mm -hmm. they are the ones who are going to play the, the under twenty and the twenty three and the, also the blaster. Look at one under twenty three. A, 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 a group that from there you can play for the senior national team yeah. and look how they play. Some are even already in the national Yes. Are, are we choosing the right coaches for the right teams? For me, they are not helping the coaches. The FA is not helping the coaches to do their job. The FA, all of them, I will say it and say it again, I don't care. They have their players, they invite to the national team. I've been talking to a lot of coaches in the national team, and I know a lot of players in the national team f coming from the FA. Mm. They they are own players. They don't allow any coach or anybody to go and scout. They do their own players. They have their own players in the national team. How can we play good when you have a player who play in Belgium, qualify uh, to play in the uh, playoffs? He, he wasn't in the under 23, but you invited player from Romania. From Serbia, what kind of competition is that? Serbia and Romania, hmm. and the players are playing Belgium. You don't invite them, and they are Ghanaians. So, for me, look, they are they are doing a lot of bad things there, and they think they can have it their way. No, they cannot have their way. As long as we are around, we'll talk about it. Yeah, they need to change it. I don't care who is going to be the FA president. I don't care, but football have to go re right for us. Mm. Because football has given us so much. Yeah. When Kurt won the election, I, I was I was with George Free. Mm. You understand? But when he won the election, the next day I call him. I congratulate him. I told him that may God help him to do our football well for us. And he said thank you. You understand? So for me I don't care if George is there, uh, Kurt is there, or Info is there, or Fifi you are there, you are what has to be done? No, I won't be FA president. No. But I'm, I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't care who is there. Like I said to you earlier, we will not cheat the, uh, the game. But yeah. The game has given us so much. Mm. So we will not cheat. But we will we'll, we'll tell the truth. And the truth is like, they have to invest in the grassroots football. Yeah. They have to take care of the grassroots football. Mm -hmm. They have to create great pitches, good pitches, good facilities for the players. You understand? Look at our Pram Pram. Players play there and it's risky to, for, to watch them because uh, you can get injured. Mm. You understand? And they said their uh, money is coming in. We qualify for the uh, World Cup. We qualify for tournaments. Money is coming in, but you're not paying coaches. How can the coach go and give his best? What, what, what is Morocco doing that we are not doing? For me, Vivi, me, I want you, you have been doing a lot of scouting. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, so you go around a lot of countries. Recently, you've yeah. been in Morocco. You've been in, if you were in Morocco actually when you know the yeah. World Cup yeah. and all of that. Yeah, you know, after the TV like projects yeah. and all that. Yeah. So you've been in Egypt. You've been mm -hmm. even everywhere around the globe. Mm -hmm. What is Morocco doing to their football that is giving them so much success? Senegal. What is they? What are they doing that is giving them so much success? And why are we here? It's all about the grassroots football. I spoke to one of the uh, Moroccan uh, team uh, staff members, you know, mm -hmm. the national team, and he told me that it's about their young players coming coming up. They make sure they invest in the grassroots football mm -hmm. because 
that's everything they have. Because, because Fifi, whenever you are building a house, you start from foundation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you cannot build from up to down. Mm -hmm. No. So that's what they are doing right now. And look at Senegal, they are doing the same thing. I was there, there's an academy there called uh, uh, Mohammed Academy. It's an individual academy. Fifi, if you see the kind of players they produce, and the, the way they play, you ask yourself, wow. But when they, call, when they invite the national team, only two or three players there. Like the other yes, but look, I've been scouting all over the world. I, there's a lot of Tanya players living in uh, Africa, living in Mali, Senegal, uh, uh, Morocco, playing the, one of the best academies there. Who is scouting them? Who is finding them? I hear Niger actually comes to Kumasi. People from Niger come to Kumasi to scout for players and take them to Niger yeah. to go and, and change their like, nationality and before they play for them. They play. Yeah. Was in Mali. Yeah. They had about six Ghanaian players in one academy. The best academy in uh, Africa, like when we talk about producing Champions League yeah. players, mm -hmm. they produce Javino, Ture, Aya, Kure, and all these players, and it's called GMJ. And they have players there from Ghana, Kumasi, Wenchi, Techima, playing there. Every tournament that they go, they win that tournament. And they are playing regular. And they're from Ghana. Nobody is watching them. Nobody knows where they are. Because we are not we are not doing what we're supposed to do. Thanks to Right to Dream, they are also producing some great players for us. Yes. I mean because I mean what Tom Vena is doing currently for Ghana football is, is amazing. Maybe I mean our, 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 our the biggest issue or problem that we, we, we supposed to have is facilities. Where you can nurture these players, train them and, and for them polish them to become the mm -hmm. future star that we are them to be. Secondly, they talked about quotes for me. Whenever I hear quotes, 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 I don't even know the meaning of quotes, which is C-O-L-T-S. I don't know. But we all played quotes. In my era, it was by height, 4'11". Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I can fit under the 4'11", I will play. That's where people were allowed to uh, carry cement blocks <laughs> so they can Go be a beach. Yes. Yes. And yes. They, they call it Uka Jachu. <laughs> Uka Jachu. <laughs> you know. So I, I, I want We don't want to move forward because we need to talk about doing our soccer. Mm -hmm. But when you refer to quotes, I refer to the quotes that I play because I could go under the 411, mm -hmm. but then be above the age expected to be playing that competition. Yeah. So are you saying that we should maintain that or we should consciously build the youth system properly? I think that the confusion here is the fact that back in the day, in our time, there was no juvenile, so to speak, like yes. as it is called today. Mm -hmm. The academies were not existing and all of those things. So Colts football was more of what was for the juveniles. Juvenile, yes. So that's why you have the under 12, mm -hmm. under 15. And that's how it was termed the Colts football. So if there's evolution, if things have happened and there have been progress made, some still refer to it as old foot, uh, cold football, no, you, you know, be. but it's juvenile football juvenile. that we want to improve. Where you can Some people school. still say GAFA, mm. GFA. GFA. Some still say GAFA because they belong to a certain yeah, old school. Football. Exactly, you know, but that's what I'm saying. So maybe it is the, the use of the word, so we should. but juvenile football is what cuts across yes, all of that. We educate people so mm. that we can enter the schools. This philosophy lounge mm. should also identify the schools. Last week there was this inter-schools competition going on. I was driving around Elwa. The whole place was packed. Yeah, yeah. In Kumasi, there was. I even hear uh, a school even went to the court. Mm -hmm. See, people love to be engaged. Yeah. So let's engage the schools. And then let's try to have the, the right plan and ideas about unearthing those type of talents. Mm -hmm. There he spoke about all over the place, coaches. Yes, coaches stay in Accra. Regional RFAs and whatever select coaches for them, and then they have to select the best out of it for them. To mm -hmm. I think that, like what Derek is doing, if I am a coach and I am paid by the FA, my duty 
is to scout and scout and scout until the time I begin to have my players in, in proper company. Yeah. I know the, the right players or materials to select. There should not be any national coach everything. That should be attached to anything. This is one thing the FE should try and correct. I know it's difficult because yesterday I was on GTV Sports Plus for the program and then I think we had a, about 12 national teams now. And the 15 and the whatever put together both mm. men and female. Male and female. 12. And if we are supposed to pick all the technical men in every whatever, they are talking about minimum six technical men to be paid. I know it's difficult. But there should always be that, that push to be able to, because everybody deserves to earn a salary at the end of the mm. day. The government is there. In this case, DFA holds the national team in trust for the government. They are running for the government. Mm. The government should also come in. FIFA brings in monies here and there. Should tap some of the money as part of development. Mm -hmm. As the coach's salary, other sponsors' money will come in, add it, and make sure that coaches are paid. And I don't think that all national teams are in camp at any given time. So there should be a way of structure that a national team coach should also not be the coach of Arsenal Folk or Asante Kotoko or Dream Safe or the Champion. A national team coach, your duty is to work for the nation. So that you can even go around where matches are being played and yeah, monitor players. That is what I'm coming at. Because with, I mean, somebody like um, Gareth Southgate, you find him at a Man United game. The you find him at this. Yes, you find him at. So basically, most of the coaches in England are not even attached to any. The national team coaches are not they attached are not to, to any particular even club. The junior national team, they are not supposed to be attached. All that their focus is on to make sure that there are a lot of youth out there. How do I? The whole England. I'm able to select 22 or 23 good good players. Mm -hmm. It is your duty to be going out there, to be scouting, yeah. visiting Arsenal Youth Centre, their team, go to Chelsea, go to this, go mm -hmm. to Redden, mm -hmm. make sure that you pick all these players and bring them together and mold them mm -hmm. to become the stars that we envisage having in the future. Yeah. Until that time, or until we do that, the FA will like then said, everybody is wrong but them. Everybody is wrong by them. They are not wrong. Secondly, if the coaches are not good like we heard, what are they doing for the coaches? Trainings are they doing? Look, 2015, we were in a game. Myself and CK were scouting. And we were doing work also for Coach Yotiaka because he was the head of the Treka study group. So all his report was being written by myself and CK. And as a coach, why is it that whenever we finish training in Pram Pram, we don't select some of the coaches and train them purposely for handling the junior national teams? For the blast that we can always appoint Afram Grand, mm, mm. so let's leave them. Why don't we put our minds together so that those that we want to handle the junior national teams will be given further trainings, be it Ghana or abroad? Mr. Nyateji had our conversation because you're staying in the same house as Kujotia can. On our way to training, he has coach. And I told him, I said, oh, are you from this evening? He said, see, you people should adopt it. And then, I don't know what became of it. Mm. 2023, we are saying coaches. A coach who works for Hassel Folk is also a coach for the national team. Why? Because the national team cannot pay. So Hassel Folk will pay him. Mm. So he will receive his salary at Hassel Folk. And work for them. And work for the national team. And then we turn around to come and say, coaching is bad. I will every day disagree with that assertion that coaches are bad. You, you, I mean, a lot of uh, coaches from the under 6, under 15, under 17, all the way, except for the Black Stars, I understand are not paid. Yeah. Are, oh, they, yeah. are they all members of the PFAG? And if they are members of the PFAG, no. what is the PFAG doing about speaking on behalf of those coaches who are not being paid and who are members of the PFAG? But I mean, I'm even surprised why they are there, those coaches, because you, can't, you are there and things are not doing right. And you know there's a lot of wrong things there and you are still there so wh why are you there if i'm working at, at the gfa and uh, i know there's a lot of things that are going on wrong and i'm saying it or i'm talking about it and it's not been fixed or nothing has been done i have to resign i have to move from there because mm -hmm. that's not me you understand and i was talking about this uh, uh this school's football that they are playing mm -hmm. 
I feel like the FA need to have a scouting team that will go out there. They don't have one? They ask the coaches to go and do it. The coach is and the coach has a club that is coaching. He has a national team. So how can you ask the same coach to go and scout he when he has his own team? He can't. Maybe you understand? If his team is playing, yeah. how can he scout? Because if a coach is scouting, he's looking for a performance from the player. Mm -hmm. If I'm scouting, I'm looking for potential, I'm looking for uh, performance, I'm looking for uh, in future how the player is going to be, like in two or three years. Mm -hmm. So my mindset and his mindset is different, but at the same time, I have to go out there and go and scout for the coach mm -hmm. and come and sit down with the coach and give him the report and debate about the player. Mm -hmm. Because they, we are not doing that. Because this school's football that they are playing, there's a lot of talent there, Fifi. Trust me. Mm -hmm. That's where we get our players from, right, children? You understand? Yeah. This school football, you think there's nothing, but when you go there and sit down, you see a lot of talent, raw talent, mm -hmm. you know that, look, this is something. Mm -hmm. But nobody cares about that because we don't have it. We, we don't. Yeah. They, we don't have anything. Like, like I was saying to you, they don't care. They hmm. care about the blasters that uh, blaster is playing. Yeah. Blah, blah. Yeah. But what's supposed to be done is this grassroots football, like going around, going to the villages, going to bad, bad areas where you can identify. They, look, one of the most important things in the game right now is now scouting, identify uh, uh, talent. Mm -hmm. You understand? If you can do it, if we have a group can do it, that every month or, or every six months or, look, it's not supposed to be there. Like, right to dream I'm working for, I have a uh, right, to, right to dream visa card. Mm -hmm. That every tournament, I have it. So that when you go to every tournament, you are able to just scout for players or what does it do? That, what, what does the right to dream card do? Okay, visa right card. to dream is the is a, the visa card. Mm -hmm. You see, the SCN. Yeah. And this card, I can pay my own flight, I can pay my hotel, and go and scout for right to dream. So you see, they are investing in it. Yeah. Because that's where the football is coming from. That's mm -hmm. where we can make the game right. Them. Yes. But in FA, they are not even pay a coach. How can they pay a scout or to pay a hotel for a scout or a flight for a scout? You see, Fifi, so I don't need to call my boss that there's a tournament in uh, Morocco or there's a tournament in Germany. I have mm. to, no, I just check what, what, where the tournament is. I just book my flight. I go, I pay my hotel. I, lo I, I stay in for one week or 10 days, pay my food and everything. I have it. This is football. This boy you call that you can you can identify talent. You can mm. you are you are doing something. That's where we get these kudus come out in it, and there's all these kind of players coming from. Mm. And they should watch, watch for more. There's more players coming from mm. right to them. It will be like Liberty then that time where we are six seven. Seven players the national from, team. Yes, yes, from Liberty. You understand? That's what right to dream doing. So the FA have to invest in the grassroots football. Have to invest in their scouting team to go out there. It doesn't matter. If it, for me, I can go anywhere and go and scout. Mm. Even if I have to sleep. There was one interview I did with uh, uh, last year, November, with CNN. They asked me why am I scouting. I said, when I was playing, I was making money in my pocket. But right now, I'm scouting. It's like I'm doing it to feed my soul. If I have to go to Iraq to sleep in the car and scout, the next day I'll do it. I don't care where it takes mm. me. Because like, identifying talent is one of the most important thing in the game yeah. and we are not doing that we don't care about that and you ask coaches who has a club to come and scout he has a national team three things you are putting on him and you are not even paying him gentlemen let's look at um, the draw that was done for the world cup our time is going so let's look at the draw that was done for the world cup i mean ghana has been put in a group that everybody thinks it should be easy for us to qualify to the world cup we're in a group with mali Madagascar, uh, Central African Republic, uh, Comoros, and Chad. How easy should we think? I mean, a lot of Ghanaians are saying that black stars, no matter what they do, they should qualify for this tournament <laughs> because it's in America and in Canada and in Mexico. <laughs> because they want to go to America, they want to go to Canada and yeah, Mexico. Right. <laughs> you know, so I mean, a lot of people are following this because they want the black stars to get to. Because supporters will definitely go to America and to Canada and to Mexico. Mexico is not probably the target. America and Canada will be the target. So much killing exactly. I mean, if you're not careful, and the draw is such that Ghana's group games are in Mexico. We don't speak Spanish. We don't speak Spanish. But, gentlemen, on paper, it seems to be 
a, an easy, fairly easy group for us to have qualified without any struggle. But in our recent history, and in the recent results that we've garnered against these teams, how easy will it be for us to qualify, or how should we approach this? Let me start with you, Derek. Uh, <laughs> I was I was with the DRU yesterday, uh, two days ago, and mm. we were talking, and I told him that uh, if he have seen the, uh, the the group, and he said, yeah. And I was asking him, Charlie, what do you think? And he said, Charlie, the thing we have to focus. People might think that it's easy group because of the names, mm. but now names doesn't play football anymore. You understand? So it's like, it's not an easy group, yeah. it's not a tough group, it's a group that everyone wants to qualify to the World Cup, and it's a World Cup. Mm -hmm. The way we are thinking, uh, the fans are thinking that we should qualify to, uh, uh, to the World Cup so that some people will go to US or Canada. The same thing, uh, 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 Madagascar is thinking about that, Chad is thinking about that, uh, Malians, is, they are thinking about it, because it's a good tournament to play, mm -hmm. you understand? For me, it's like, it's a special tournament. So. It's a tough group that we need to concentrate. Mm -hmm. We need to, you know, pay attention to every detail, you know, mm -hmm. and make sure that we do the right things. Because if we think that it's going to be easy group, uh -huh, there'll be a surprise. We all went Madagascar recently, right? Yeah. And we didn't even beat them. We drew. We drew. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they know how we play. They know how they can handle us. So it's not an easy group. But when you check with the names, you think that is, they are not a football nation. You understand? But football doesn't play that way anymore. You know, you just have to go on the field, perform, do your best, and just give 1,000%. I, I will come for us to look at each country that we are facing. Uh, but before then, let me just um, look at our Facebook page and some of the messages that are coming through. Somebody says, Frank Edu Miyawusu says he's watching us live from uh, Ayakumaso Methodist Basic School in Sunyane. He says he's watching us from there. First and Emisa says, uh, keep up the good work, I'm watching you live and call it. Um, um, K. Fancy Anand says, thank you. Nashome is watching us. Nana Fifi J.C. Mensa says, what is he also doing to help the game as a former footballer? His colleagues are doing it for their country. Um, what are we doing for it? Nana Kwisa Samwa is also watching. So Derek, I'm sure it was about you know, uh, the scouting, and he's asking, what are we also doing as a former footballer um, to help the game? That is, if you'll be allowed to do anything for the game. Yeah, hey, I'm doing, I'm scouting for Right to Dream. Mm. They give me a platform to do that. And Right to Dream is producing players like Kudus yeah. and all of yeah. those. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I'm doing my best, and the FA know what I'm doing. Mm. So if they want me to head for the national team, but to be honest with you, I don't trust them, so I don't think I can go there and do anything. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, I cannot be there, and when a lot of things are going wrong... you keep quiet. I'll keep quiet. Mm. I'll talk, and they will not like that. They'll kick me out, and I don't want to go there for them to kick me out. So for me, what I'm doing, I'm doing with Right to Dream. I go all over the world, and in, even in Ghana, the kind of places I've been, if you to scout, to identify talent, you'll be shocked. Some of the times, my boss, Tom, even surprised that I can even go there, you understand? But it's part of my game, you know, I really, really love this game so much, and, you know, I'll give 1,000% for this game. So for me, I'm doing that, and I'm really, really happy to do that. I, there's so many things in the game that all of us can do, yeah. not only coaching. Yeah. There's a scouting, there's a team manager, there's a coaching, there's, you understand? So mm. for me, I choose to scout, because I feel like I feel more important, uh, like, I feel comfortable there and I know I can identify the talent because look to identify talent is is, is it's not simple. Yes. Yeah. You have to you mean you have to go out there. You don't have to sleep. You have to go out there, be on your A game, be be sure that you are you are one thousand percent, you know, right. Mm -hmm. Because you are bringing it to the coach. Mm -hmm. And the coach has to see the player. So sometimes then, then so many people send me players to yeah. watch. You understand? So for me, a lot of people ask me that I should give them the secret of uh, scouting. There's no secret of scouting. It's only patience. Because as a scout, you are the brain, you are the mind, you are the eyes, you are the technical director yeah. of the coach. Yeah. So basically, anything that you recommend to the coach must be of good value that yeah. he can work with. Yeah. You know, that's that's a very and difficult job. And also, even thinking that the players that you are picking will have the right mentality mm -hmm. to fit in mm -hmm. wherever you want mm -hmm. to fit them. It's not mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Probably the person asking that question, what are they also doing? Financially, he has to come and put his money somewhere. That is not it. Because I remember 
been an executive council meeting those times, and one of them was saying that the PFAG, you have to invest in football before you can come. Really? What investment do you do? <laughs> Us. We played a game before, we played a match, and we said, so what investment again are you looking for? Physical cash? So, you see, as a people, one, one speaks to take your time and analyze what the person spoken about is our issue. Let's talk about the yes. Now let's take the teams one by one. Yeah. I mean, which of the teams is the most dangerous in the group? All of us. <laughs> because you see, the, the mentality of Ghanaians mm. is that because we are Ghana, mm. it's our it's our best right. We have to qualify and beat them. Mm. Like a journalist was saying that we are Ghana for the I was saying we have to qualify. But they are right, right? At all costs, they are right. Qualify. If the FA is doing the right things. I'm saying that yeah. Mali, Mali, for the past few games that we played against Mali, the last one being a friendly game in Turkey, they beat us three. 2013, South Africa Nations Cup, third place, they beat us. 2017, Gabon, third place, they beat us. The subsequent match, they beat us. The last one being in Turkey, when they beat us 3 0, friendly game. So money, they, they are not pushed over. But we beat them in the World Cup qualify home and away. That is way back when Mr. Nyantichi was the president of the FA. Not home and away. We mm. beat them 2-0 over there. Yeah. But we drew 2-2 two, yeah. two here. Mm. Yeah. So... It was, it was what, 2006 World Cup? Yes, before that, yeah. Yeah, 2006. Mm. You see, so... No, it's not 2010. 2010, yeah. 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 South Africa. Yes, South Africa. So, they have never been an easy opponent for us at all. But, but they've got a wealth of talents, yes. too. Look, the recent 3-0 we lost to them. Most of the players that played that game were under 23 players. They are going to push, or now they are even in the national team proper. The recent tournament that we played in Morocco, Mali has qualified for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. It's under 23. Some will definitely be in their national team. So we cannot discard them at all. So is Madagascar. Mm -hmm. So is Central Africa Republic. We can do one one with them. Not even in their home grounds because the assault was not approved. They played the game somewhere in Angola. They drew one one with them. And then you come to Madagascar, we all saw about some few weeks down the line. Chad will not play them so we no recent history, fight. yeah. This is the time for the coaches, the technical men in Chad to start their scouting. Watch videos of them. Make sure that when the time arrives Comoros. Comoros there will know them. <laughs> <laughs> I say we know them. Yeah, they beat us in the nation's cup. Right? Yes, right. When wow. was the president, mm. don't forget we played qualifiers with them. Mm. We drew over there. Mm. Asamojan and all of them were in that team. We drew. They really beat us over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we won 1 0. So, here. so Comoros is a good team that, you see, the problem is. And the Comoros right. players, most of them are based in France. France and Serbia. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You see, if you have players like this, Comoros have this. So they are able to keep what they have. We have individual brilliance, yes. but they have a team. Yes. Mm. Ours, this, so many players, and they, they, the ones that we select probably would not be the right ones to be selected at that moment. Mm. But we selected them. So I'm saying that the technical men of the team, between now and September, that will start the qualifiers until we end later 2025. Mm should be consistently, busy. constantly, busy scouting. Like there is a scouting. I have dealt a bit with scouting because I know what I'm talking about. I remember myself and Sika Kono trying to smuggle our way to go and scout on South Africa in a country where we were arrested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so scouting for the national team is so easy. But one area of scouting that we don't appreciate is scouting during the match. Mm -hmm. see, scouting during the match tells you exactly what the team is doing out there. And then you passing on the information, the talking command down there for them to look at it. I remember in Kumasi against Nigeria, Chris Hilton was sitting right beside me, up there. Because then he was just the technical advisor also. And he had his file in front of him. The moment the game started, I saw the Nigerian right side of defense not being that strong. So I prompted him and he nodded and started trotting to so immediately the whistle went for master. He went down there to the person. 
This is counting green and white. Mm. We have to appreciate this. We need to appreciate it. But when you are sitting on top there and you are watching the game down, you see, you see a lot of everything. things. Yeah. Mm. Even the yeah. formation of whatever yeah. and yeah. The, 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 the motoric reaction. Yeah. I always say this motoric reaction. Motoric reaction is that like you spark your car. Yeah. The engine is there. Mm. The gearbox is there. Mm. Whatever, pistons, everything. You tap the key, all the components start working. Yeah. So it's the motoric reaction yeah. of the car that moves the car. Mm. So if the game commences, the referee was big. The motoric reaction of what your team, what are you doing? When you have the ball going forward, how do we move? What's a progression rate? Progression, how, yeah. how do you transition mm. into defense? These are all motoric reactions. So when you are up there, you see all these things being applied. And then you can put the information in. Yeah. So one area the FA, the technical group should concentrate and work on is how we scout during the match. Mm -hmm. And then after the match, we do our post analysis of the game. Like in a Guterra game, when the coach wanted to blame us, the scout. Because he said he gave us a job and we were in Ghana. You give me a job. The next day, you travel to Spain with the team over there. We're playing the Guterra game. We were supposed to scout on South Africa, Algeria, and, and Senegal. We were in the same group. Senegal were in camp in Morocco. Algeria were in Abu Dhabi. South Africa decided. How were you supposed to get there? There. And then you lose the first match against Senegal, and you want to blame us that this is it. I don't know. You are wrong. Where you are coming from? Eh? When they give you a job, you know where to go. There's an office to go. When you go, your ticket, your whatever, like they yeah. just showed us the car. Yeah. Right to them has given him this visa card that if he's supposed to go and scout on the player in Gabon, he doesn't need anybody's phone call. Mm. He goes there and scout and gives you the information. And he said, No, no, no. I said, what I identify was I'm telling you, we are playing three back. I don't think we have the players for playing three mm. back. We lost to Senegal. So I told Mr. Yantich, Mr. Yantich spoke to the coach. I'm from Ghana. He told Ghanaians are not happy. About the format to play, so revert to our previous whatever. Mm. Whether it's 442 with variation. Now, someone wasn't well, he didn't play that. Yeah, game. yeah, that's why he came and scored that one goal. That Malam goal against Algeria, yeah. See? Mm. So, we should appreciate mm. this, this thing, yeah. But when at the end of the day, say we are not educated, so we don't have the mouth to speak, <laughs> it becomes so disheartening. We we'll talk, go. We we'll have the whole we'll talk. So if I am not educated, I am not supposed to have a mind. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Education is not all common sense. Yeah. But no. yeah. you entered <laughs> when you went to take. Who are it, it, who are not yeah, 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 yeah. Education is not all about common sense. When you went to did you speak the language? When you went there for the first. Initial, I wasn't speaking. Yeah, but when they put you in the game, I you know what you. Remember, this is about. I remember when I went to take. The coach loved me, and he agreed. But they wanted to see me in play. I told the coach, coach, I haven't played for some few months. He says, I understand. I can see in training you are good. Then we played a friendly game against Samsung School. And then I was on the bench. Then 0 0 first time, then you call Hinneken in the camp. Speak to Augustine. All the club officials are here. They are here to see him. Because I told him he's good. We were in Antalya. I didn't even play one friendly match. They want to see him play before. And then I told Kennedy to tell the coach. If what I saw is what he wants me to do, then tell him that I can do better than what I saw. He looked at me <laughs> and asked him, are you sure he understood what you said? <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, Aziz, can, Aziz, Charlie, what's the meaning of there? I said, I'm done now. I'm sorry, tell him that. The coach just got up. He left us in the room. Well, he, he was telling me something I need to, I love you. I make sure that that man sitting there also lost you so that you sign your contract. Mm. So we worked on the floor. Second half, played five minutes and then the two summer went in. My first ball, he goes to run out. You want to bring it, but I just do like this. Mm. Day. I tell the defender, bam, I was that freaky. They hit the ball, bam, I scored. One zero. One minute, the coach has to come to the mission. I think the ball, I pass, I move, I think. Five minutes, they raise number 15. I'm coming up. I said, I'm not going to go in there. It's enough. You're it's enough. Also, you know. I, came out, no, I went to the, then the coach came. Augustin, take your shot. You see that old man with the fighter? His name is Aslanda. You see the brown and gold is It's your country. Yeah, everything is in there. Your money is there. 
But take when they sign your contract, they give you thirty percent after. Mm. So go and sign, take your money. <laughs> so we dealt with people, we dealt with coaches, mm. soccer, staff in there. And if you somebody says that you have to indicate yourself. You ask us. I bet the monkey they go gone PhD behind. No. It's, so, it's, so Derek, do, do you think that Ghana can make it to the World Cup? Of course. If the FA do the right things, you know, mm. like Augustine say, mm. now we have time from now. They have to make sure that we have, if the coaches who are going to scout or we have a scouting team, he will, they will put out there on each team, yes. each country, to make sure that they are monitoring them, they are watching their training, they are scouting, they are watching their games, and bring a report in for the coach. Mm. But at the end of the day, the coach, the coach has to have all the reports from the scout mm. so that he can sit down and work on and they talk uh, uh, talk about it with the scout, debate about it, the things, you know. You got, the coach cannot have it his way. Like, yeah. I'm the final say. No, yeah. it's a teamwork. Mm. So he needs to work with this technical everybody. team. Yeah, everybody has to get involved. So for me, it's, it's really, really important. Because okay. if they said they are not going to do that and we'll sit down because it's Comoros, because it's that, it's that, we are not going to be there. Mm. So they have to make sure that they invest in it and they make take the right decisions and be put the right people there to do that because they you cannot know, come back we, and come before, in. Before mm. Derek ends, you know, the team that this guy who plays in Serbia plays for, uh, this Ghanaian player who is playing so well now. B Bukhari? Bukhari. Mm. They, you know the Comoros captain he plays in that team also? Mm. He's a left footer. He scored the third goal when we played in Cameroon. Mm. Yes. He plays in that team also. Very good player. He's their captain. So, Individually, we need to scout them, and then collectively, if we are not able to see them, you watch their videos, their recent matches. Their last qualifier that they played, they beat, I think, Botswana in South Africa, 1-0, a goal was scored in the last minute. We scout, we look at that tape, the previous matches that they've played, you take Mali, their matches that they've played, make sure that, like Derek said, the whole team sit down, analyze it. Maybe I'm sure they have video analysts. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's work should come to play, mm. and at the end of the day, have a plan yeah. for every team that is in our group. Yeah. We need to have a plan. Yeah. If we, look, we make sure we win all our home matches, and over there, if we draw, even I think it's a plus for us. Yeah, yes. because I it's mean, so, technically, we should be able to get some wins away. Obvious. I mean, you know, <laughs> out of the group, we should be able to at I least mean, win some matches plan, away chat. and win our whole, all our home if games. If you are playing in chat right mm. and yes, the right. weather is not favorable. I told you, Uncle Ben's book, mm. climate condition. Acclimatization. Climate, it's, it's there. Yeah, acclimatization. So, if you go to Mali. Those days, when you go to Sudan, Ombudsman, the, 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 the climate there yeah. is so difficult Ethiopia. to play in. Yeah. Ethiopia yeah. is so difficult to in play Kenya. in. Yeah, yeah. so... All those high altitude areas, yes. we must have a way of dealing, yes. dealing yeah. with them. You yes. know, dealing yeah. with them. Guys, I like to thank you so much for for being on this one. Uh, definitely, I'm sure that as the time goes on, more and more of such conversations will come up, and uh, we'll take special interest to Derek's uh, scouting. We'll pay a visit to Ride to Dream one of these days, and then you take us on a tour of Ride to Dream, and they will show you to our viewers what uh, you guys are doing at Ride to Dream to produce all these great players for for ghana you know interestingly uh would have to do what want to do that one of these days so derek thank you very much i call him the call him the mercurial derek labby I mean, derek laughs the derek labby derek watting because derek those days on the ball you should see him real talent 2001 he was one of the best players. you should see him real skill real talent uh, you see? <laughs> Maradona talked about you. Eh? Exactly. In Argentina. I remember, yeah. yeah. I mean, you played with Saviola, Messi, yeah. and all those yeah. boys. Yeah. I think he was the only foreign base player in our team. No, SN2 was in Lyon. SN2 was in New Yeah, it was in Lyon. Yeah. No, in Bastia. No, Bastia, Bastia, Bastia. yeah. And to the world, I was in Amsterdam. Ayas. Ayas, yeah. And Zach Ibrahim was in Empoli. Empoli. Yeah. And I was, in, I was with Panathinaikos. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think so. So, so you, guys, you guys have done some. And then, of course, to Augustin Ahimfo, um, one of our very, very own. And what people remember Augustin Ahimfo is, is with what? Usually, they will tell him that when he is a striker, but when he finishes the matches, any time he falls down, he tucks in his shirt. He's a gentleman. He's been a gentleman even, from even, day even one. Now, he's even been now, gentleman. yes, yeah. he's been a gentleman from yeah. day one. Yeah. He, he doesn't get dirty. No, no, no. But no, he will no. score. Yeah. <laughs> That's the whole thing. But, I mean, and, and, were we playing in sand? 
<laughs> and they respect themselves so much. Oh yeah, 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 so yeah, 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 yeah. Up to now, Augustine like is a is a know. great guy. He's yeah. a great guy. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much, and uh, for you all watching as well, thank you so much. Tomorrow we'll be back again, same time, and tomorrow we're having another discussion. And just keep on watching here on Fifty Manson TV, on Facebook, and on YouTube. Thank you so much, to my crew, and have a good afternoon. Hehehehe <laughs>